When Rem Koolhaas was appointed as, as director of the Biennale, they announced that this was going to be a different kind of Biennale, that it would be a global research project. They wanted this to be an exhibition about architecture and to reconnect architecture uh, with, a, with a sort of broader social, political context. And he wanted all the national pavilions to focus on the same issue so that there could be more than just the sum of the parts. There could be something that felt really groundbreaking in terms of having new insights into a particular subject. And that subject was absorbing modernity 1914 to 2014. So it was a great opportunity. And I think for us, it was a, it was a chance to really kind of reconsider in a fresh way the history of British modernism. We uh, chose not to make a show uh, that would consist entirely of architecture, but to focus on the idea that shaped British architecture and the, and the uh, imagination that more or less fed into British modernism. It's a show that's focused on history, uh, but it arrives at a conclusion that raises questions about the future. The title, Clockwork Jerusalem, is essentially an amalgam of the, the, the Jerusalem of William Blake and the uh, clockwork of Stanley Kubrick. It really begins with William Blake and the Jerusalem that, that he imagined, the, the new Jerusalem that, that uh, uh, he imagined coming down as a kind of shining new future of Britain, right in the midst of the Industrial Revolution. The, the British cities in the late 18th and uh, 19th century were in a constant state of crisis due to deprivation, inequality, poverty. And this was what uh, the great visionaries like William Morris or, uh, or for example William Blake himself or the people who built the uh, um, uh, Arnold Circus, one of the first uh, public housing projects, what they reacted to. So if you could take a slice through London, for example, from Arnold Circus to, to Thamesmead, you get the story of how we've tried to rehouse ourselves, how we've tried to imagine ways of living. None of these projects are glamorous. None of these projects are built out of beautiful materials. Their qualities come from something else. They come from a kind of ambition. We don't call to bring back modernism as a style, or we don't call to, to reinstate the garden cities or to build new towns again. What we call for is to revive this tradition of a radical, uh, visionary approach. The Venice Architecture Biennale is certainly the largest international architecture festival. Um, but I think the important thing about it is that it doesn't um, it doesn't sort of fit neatly into a, to a, a box. It's a place where academics and students certainly go to think and to, to learn, but it's not purely theory. It has an impact on, on the real world practice of architecture. It's one of the rare opportunities where the world at large takes note of architecture. We show many instances where uh, mo modernism, modernization, modernity uh, is also part of the British uh, popular imagination. It was not just uh, a matter of the elites uh, in the architecture schools and the magazines uh, obsessing over this, and that is the kind of energy that we want to tap into and, and, and kind of release again as, uh, as something to, to actually make changes.